Hello and welcome to the second round of the Hashtag Race Home Charity Racing Series. After a thrilling first round last week at the Spa Francorchamps circuit with a near victory of Robin Freins, he was just beaten by one of our guest drivers, we are back today with the second race of this Charity Racing Series. And I'm not alone here as a host. I have a very, very famous co-host, which has spent a lot of time in the paths and the paddocks on the racetracks. And now we spend some time virtually. Welcome to Tom Christensen. Hi, Tom. Oh, thank you very much. How is your experience so far with sim racing, Tom? Um, sim racing, not, not much, uh, but simulators. Uh, yes, uh, through the last part of my career, we uh, very much uh, optimized, uh, particularly in the WEC and, and going to Le Mans. Uh, we did uh, quite some sim sessions to optimize the car performance uh, during off season, but also uh, to um, make sure that the drivers were acquainting themselves were very well with um, with the different circuits and new circuits which we took part in. But racing itself, I mean, that is, uh, of course, a new phenomenon which is really growing and growing incredibly uh, these times. Also during these um, these tough times we have uh, have at the moment. Uh, so yes, um, not a lot, but it's growing and it's something which I, I look um, forward to follow more in future. Of course, yesterday was not the best day, let's say, for the motorsport and the Audi Sport family, with Audi announcing to stop DTM racing at the end of this season. Tom, what's your re reaction on that? Yeah, it's with, um, it's with great sadness. I look back at fantastic uh, years, uh, of course, racing in, in the championship myself, but also following uh, these exciting cars, um, the teams, the drivers now, what we have with Audi and, and, and the fans. It, it's, it's, it's very sad that uh, Audi and the new DTM have been incredibly successful uh, over 20 seasons after, after this final year. So um, it's very sad. But we have to say it was, you know, some ways it's not unexpected. There's a lot of Forsprung um, uh, uh, goes forward. There's a... Uh, new ways of adapting uh, the cars in terms of uh, mobility in general. And uh, a lot of these things uh, also affects the motorsport industry and we have to move forward and we will always find new ways, I'm sure about that. But the, sort of the immediate effect is looking back at a fantastic time in, uh, of DTM. And uh, of course, it's with a sad heart. Yeah, for sure, it's a sad heart for all of us. We have all been involved in DTM. I'm very happy that our six DTM drivers are still racing with us here in the Race Home Charity Racing Series. Everybody's here also today after they got the not so good news yesterday. So first of all, let's have a look what's Race Home. These class one cars are just pure joy to watch and to drive. And now we only have to focus on the new season. So let's get it started. The DTM garages are currently closed for an indefinite period of time. So let's turn the PlayStation into a race station. The RCCO hashtag Race Home Charity Racing Series, based on the RCCO eSports Series. 15 cars in the field, and these two are responsible. Thomas Vogt and Mike Rockenfeller. They founded RCCO eSport AG earlier this year. The DTM champion from 2013 and the record champion of the slot car racing series RCCO. 18 titles, 106 wins, former editor-in-chief of Rally Racing and also a journalist who competed in various racing events. When Mike Rockefeller will drive his DTM car again is an open question. So now, race home for a good cause. Ja, die ganze Welt ähm, steht wegen des Coronavirus aktuell ziemlich still und äh, so natürlich auch der Motorsport. Ähm, wir haben viele Freelancer, äh, die im Motorsport arbeiten und ähm, die trifft es extrem hart, weil die haben plötzlich kein Einkommen mehr und äh, deswegen ja wirklich schwierige Zeiten. Ähm, genau den Menschen würden wir gerne helfen mit unserem äh, Projekt Hashtag Race Home, das wir jetzt äh, in ganz kurzer Zeit zusammen mit Audi aufgesetzt haben und was extrem cool ist, dass meine fünf Audi DTM Fahrerkollegen direkt zugesagt haben und ich somit denen ja jede Woche auf der Playstation virtuell Rennen fahren kann und das Ganze und das ist das Wichtigste für einen guten Zweck. It's Showtime! 
So now you know a little bit more about our race home concept and one of the things we always do is we have a draw of the racetrack in the morning just before the rollout starts and this morning the computer has decided for Monza. So after Spa we have another classic track. Tom, what's about Monza? Legendary circuit, of course you have uh, the Ascari corners, the double Lesmo and the last corner, the long Parabolica, but it's a high speed circuit. You need, um, you need to modify the aerodynamics. You need in general to run a, a low downforce car, uh, still good engine power. You want a, a very stable car under braking. So in generally the whole approach uh, from engineering and driving of the setup of the car uh, means that at Monza you have to adapt a lot uh, about the car, the driving style, and a lot of drivers will say, ooh, Monza, it's a big challenge and high speed. So if something goes wrong, it, it goes very wrong at, at Monza. And with the DTM cars normally uh, racing there this year, I think it's a, it, it is a quite a good draw. We still hope we'll see DTM racing at Monza maybe at the end of this season. We still don't know when the real racing will start again, but we will now start the virtual racing. I guess we will see a lot of slipstreaming and I think we will hear a lot of action commentary of our good friend Dave Richardson. Ready for Q1. Thank you, Thomas Voigt, and also Tom Christensen, Mr. Le Mans. Welcome to the presentation team here at the Race Home Organization as we get ready to go racing, this time in Italy, at Monza. 5.793 kilometers of tarmac awaits with four left-hand turns and seven right-handers. Scuderia driver Pim Sterenberg is on pole position alongside it's Nico Muller, then it's Stefan Warschau, Rennie Rast and Robin Freins occupying P's four and five on the grid. Three laps of this extraordinarily challenging Monza circuit in very good conditions for racing are about to get underway. We await the lights on the lighting gantry. This is event number two in the hashtag race home series. As the cars head up towards the first pinch point, which is the Variante Toretta Fio chicane. A good, good start from Nico Muller, who could get the inside line here. He takes P1 away from Pim Sternberg. Rennie Rast is up to P3. He's going to be a danger man here. One to watch, but as they head into the uh, Curva Grande, uh, which is turn left. number three, Rast has got a penalty. Of course, our race director in hashtag race home you should bear in mind is that hugely experienced frank beeler great on board shot here from the uh, rennie rast car trying to pursue the car that's running in p2 currently big welcome to uh, pim sterenberg for this event the speeds of course that can be reached here at monza absolutely epic and the car's all close together, but Nico Muller with his nose in front at the moment. Heading down towards the Variante Ascari turns 8, 9 and 10. Hopping across the curbs and now the long straight before the Parabolica. The Parabolica, the long sweeping right-hander, which approaches <laughs> oh God. now. Oh God. Yeah. Nico Muller stays yeah, ahead. Yeah. Pim trying to go around the outside, yeah. has to duck in behind Let's the Nico go. Muller car. This is the Q1 race. Absolutely side by side. On board with Robin Freins now, who's coming in the middle and clatters into the back end of Nico Muller. That was a shove and a half. I'm sure that Frank Beeler will be keeping an eye on that. So we have a change for the lead. It is the uh, Scuderia driver, Pim Sterenberg, who is leading this Q1 race. Now we're on lap two of the three laps. Robin Freins up to P2. Renny Rast to P3. Oh. Hey. And uh, Vashau. And Muller hey, in all hey, sorts hey, of man. strife now. No, there is Robin Freins. Robin, of course, hugely successful at our first hashtag race home event last week. And look at this, diving up the inside. 
Nico Muller to retake P2 from Robin Frines. Go away, Robin. But Frines holds on to it for the moment. This is utterly brilliant racing. All for charity. We thank you for your donations as <laughs> Rennie Rast uh, chooses to give a little love tap to Robin Frines, which certainly didn't unsettle him. If anything, it propelled him still faster. On board with uh, Rennie Rast now as he breaks hard into this right-hander using every single centimetre of tarmac as they approach the start finish straight once again to start the final lap of this Q race. As they scream across the, what is the commentary position here at uh, Monza and Rast then diving up the inside as they go through this uh, first chicane, the Variante de Retafio. Muller now is P2, but of course, Whilst they're all fighting over P2, 3 and 4, it's just playing into the hands of Pim Stirenberg in the design contest Audi e-tron uh, Vision Gran Turismo as he is up the road. So the fight is on for P2, for P3, for P4 as well. Looks to me like Arasta's picking up another penalty here as Robin Frines dives to the inside of the two-time DTM champion. Muller then in P2, looks pretty assured currently. And uh, Stefan Vachau it is, who is uh, P5 at the moment. Rast all over the back of Robin Frines. Again, this is playing into the hands now of Nico Muller, who's able to escape up the road. This long stretch now off the back of Ascari, heading towards the curve of Parabolica. But here comes Frines with a daredevil move up the inside and a real clunk into the side of Nico Muller, which kind of got him out of the way, uh, that's for sure, but I'm convinced that that will be looked at by Frank Bieler, our race director, as P2, 3 and 4 cross the line in a photo finish, but the winner is Pim Sterenberg. Scuderia driver, what a star you are. Quite some battling there in Q1 and a victory again for one of our guest drivers, Pim Sterenberg, the Flying Dutchman, how we can call him now, beating the DTM Risers and another great drive on Robin Freins. He was struggling this morning with his PlayStation when he realized he had to run a big update. He missed the rollout in the morning, could just do one lap before this race and still he moved up from P5 to P2. Tom, what does this say about Robin? I don't know. Robin is uh, sometimes he can, I'm sure he's a team boss nightmare on, on days. Uh, but before you go to bed on that day, he will be celebrating because uh, Robin is a natural. Robin has a, is, is a very good guy. He knows very much what racing is all about. So sometimes he can be a little bit unprepared, a little bit lazy. But uh, when it comes down to when it matters, yeah, he surprises us uh, every time and again. And uh, he's a fantastic spirit in, in racing. And that's why it's not a surprise for me that he is uh, very strong in the, in the sim racing. But um, like everything, all these young drivers here, all of them, they need a little carrot in front of them. And uh, when Robin can see it, he will, he will definitely go for it. But preparation, hmm, it's not necessarily his thing. It's also very difficult for him because 8 o'clock in the morning when we do these recordings of the show is not his time at all. We talk about this later. And, but still he's there. He has a chance to grab the championship lead today if he does well in these qualifying races and then in the end in the finals. And will we see him maybe winning today or will we see another guest driver winning? And you yourself, you can be part of this next week, the week after. Look how we, you can do that. He was the big surprise at the hashtag race home kickoff one week ago. Alexis, Alexis Chambon, Chambon winner at Robin Spa. Bryan. Yeah, that's a great, uh, great moment. We are two, two racing against uh, real, real driver and, uh, and um, so it's a great experience. Alexis Chambon is a French infographer who qualified for the race via the Audi design contest. 
Every week, the fan community is asked to create especially cool designs in connection with hashtag race home, hashtag stay home, and hashtag Audi together. Every Monday, the six Audi DTM drivers decide who will get the starting position at next day's race. Via the hashtag race home website, another starting place is auctioned. Last but not least, the WRT team uses another e-tron for changing guest drivers. Today, for Sandy Stuvik, 2019 GT3 champion in Thailand, in the real world. Unfortunately, the auction car, how we call it, is not on the grid again this week. This should really change for next week. So have a look, please, at our website and see what you can do. It's, I can tell you, it is not very expensive to get this drive. It's a donation. It's for charity purpose. So maybe you have a look and get the drive for next week because we would like to have a 15 car field on the grid. So the next race is coming up. Q2. Again, some battles for the entry into the semi-final. Now, like Pim Sterenberg, our Q1 race winner, you too could be on the grid. You could donate for a ride. You could create a Corona livery. Or you could get your company to buy you a key to be on this grid. Sandy Stuvig goes from P1, hugely successful real-time racing driver. Alongside is Andreas Zerch as we look at the first row of the grid. Then it's Loic Duval, Björn Scott E. Scottke, and Mike Rockefeller as well. As the lights go green, an awful start from Sandy Stuvig and Loic Duval completely unsighted, clattered into the back of the Stuvig car. We're on board with Mike Rockefeller as we head into the first chicane, chasing down Bjorn Scottke, Scotty. But leading the way, it is Andreas Zurch, who's heading into uh, the Curva Grande now. That long, sweeping right-hander here at Monza. Keep your eyes on Mike Rockefeller, he means business. There's contact between Zurch and Skotska. And uh, Mike Rockefeller takes advantage of that, going into the second chicane. And he is a P1. So brilliant, opportunistic driving from Mike Rockefeller. Oh, and Zurch is out into the gravel. That allows Loic Duval back into a potential podium place here. He's up to P3. But Mike Rockefeller is leading the way here at Monza. Don't lose sight of this man, though. Loic Duval chasing Scotty for all he's worth into the uh, very anti Ascari before the long sweep now off the back of the Ascari heading towards the Parabolica. What an extraordinary opening lap. This is hashtag race home. We're live at Monza. And this is supreme racing. It's the Q2 race, which Mike Rockefeller is leading. But Björn Skotka is chasing him for all he's worth. The power, the sound of these Audi e-tron vision Gran Turismo cars heading in towards the first chicane. That's a daredevil move. But it could work here for Björn. He manages to scrub the speed off. Absolutely extraordinary driving. Mike Rockefeller tries to make his car a little bit wider. That plays into the hands of Loic Duval. And Loic Duval and Björn Scotch are really arguing over this P2 at the moment. So here is Björn. Going to take a look now. We'll ooh, take a look. He can take a small hit at Loic Duval who loses the back end of the car, uh, but holds on to it. This is supreme. I'm loving every minute of this. Looking back at the Bjorn Scotia car, as yet another swipe into Loic Duval. My goodness me. Of course, the big advantage taker of all this shenanigans that's going on on track is Mike Rockefeller who's got very nearly a second's lead over this man, Björn Skotka, uh, running in P2 at the moment and taking the rumble strips and the grass and the gravel and using every single bit of track that they can. So Rocky then into the Parabolica. Now this is where Björn Skotka tried a daredevil move going into the first chicane last time around. Is he going to do the same? Mike Rockefeller will be wise to it, though. 
as they head in now. Well, he... I was going to say Mike tries to make the car quite wide, but in fairness, he didn't. And oh, Skotka's round. around. Good save from Bjorn Skotka, though, getting it back in the right direction, but he's lost out of place to Loic Duval. Some heavy-duty defensive driving from Mike Rockefeller to protect that P1 place. And in so doing, left the door open for Loic Duval to occupy that P2 position, but he's some two and a half seconds down now on Mike Rockefeller. And we're on the last lap of this uh, Q2 race. So all Mike needs to do, and I say it as if it's really easy, is just hold on to his position and he should be fine. The order is Rocky, Duval, Skotka. Then it's Andreas Zerch who is running in P4 in this uh, Q2 race from Monza, <laughs> which has been something of a race of attrition, <laughs> truth be told. And boy, wouldn't I like to be a car body repairer now. I'd have my order pad at the ready. There's just one more sweeping turn for Mike Rockefeller to do. There's Andreas Search in P4 in the build liveried car. So Rocky's on his way to the checkered flag to seal the deal and be victorious in our Q2 race with Lake Duval P2. And then Bjorn Skotka, who really battled taking P3 with Andreas Search P4. And Mike Rockefeller then collects trophy number 7,642. I made that number up. So after all the action in Q1, Q2 was a little bit more calm with Mike Rockefeller taking, I would say, quite an easy win after battling in the first corner. Mike, was it easy? Uh, it, it was important to have a good start, like always, and uh, to go clean through uh, the first chicane, which is a bit difficult in Monza after the start. But once I managed that, uh, and the same with the second chicane, I, was, I would say I, I found my rhythm and uh, just tried to uh, bring it home. Okay, so you enjoy the sim racing, Mike, looks like? Yeah, I really do, actually. I, I don't spend enough time. Uh, I would say I'm a little bit like Tom. You know, I was never like uh, completely into it. Uh, I started really late. Uh, I got my own, let's say, rig uh, at the end of last year. And uh, now I'm more into it. And uh, with the PlayStation, it's good fun. I mean, I always had kind of a link to the PlayStation since I was a kid, uh, uh, playing some games like rallying and other racing games. Um, but obviously now here for this purpose, it's quite cool, even though some parts are not as realistic as in other uh, sim games or, or sim uh, platforms. But I think for what we are using it, the graphics are fantastic and the fun is good. And if you see all the designs people are putting in, it's, it's amazing, you know, how many people you, you attract. And I mean, we do it for a good thing, for charity. We, we try to collect money and I think we just uh, choose the right uh, platform. With the we only on the show, we talked already about Tom, with Tom about the decision of Audi yesterday to pull out of DTM and the end of the season. Mike, how did you experience this yesterday because you're personally affected of this? Built uh, to say, you know, even a day after, it feels uh, even worse, I would say. Um, it's a bit like Tom said, uh, you know, it's not like it's uh, completely, completely unexpected. If you, I mean, we always knew that there's a chance that uh, one day we, we don't continue in DTM as Audi. Um, obviously, this uh, situation we're all in right now uh, maybe accelerated that a bit. Um, I mean, personally, it's 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 a nightmare because uh, I've been doing DTM for so many years. Um, I, I love the championship. Um, you know, my mechanics, everybody working in in this uh, in this motorsport, uh, how do you say, format is 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 hurt right now. So it is a decision we have to accept. We have to move forward, and uh, things are changing. That's for sure. I really hope that we can do a championship still this year. To, to you know say goodbye to all the fans and to end uh, the DTM era for Audi on an high hopefully also my personal one I would love to to win that championship one more time and that was always the goal and uh, that's what I'm fighting for and focus on right now uh, that's that's all I can do and then hopefully uh, you know find something else in the future 
where I can still enjoy what I, what I love and that's racing. Yes, I think we would all love to see some more DTM races this year with cool battles on the racetrack with this really cool class one cars. But I have to say, at least virtually, our Audi Vision e-tron Gran Turismo is also very cool and fast and sparking sparks flying. We saw already in the first races here on the track in Monza and last week at Spa. It's really, really stunning to watch and we're already looking forward to Q3 and I guess this could be quite action-packed. A big thank you to all our teams that are taking part in Hashtag Race Home. They are Abt Sportsline, Phoenix Racing, Team Rosberg, WRT and TV Racing. Thomas Voigt, pole position, alongside is Bettina Schiller. And the rest of the grid lined up then with Jamie Green and Mikael Nimas, who was such a star in round one. And off we go, Thomas Voigt then immediately trying to squeeze Bettina Schuller out of the way. Side by side, a little bit of panel rubbing going into uh, turn number one as Jamie Green uh, just connects uh, for the second time here with the back end of Thomas Voigt as the cars all come to a standstill. And brilliant driving from Thomas Voigt there, who has managed to get the car in P1. There is uh, Mikael Nimas then, who is uh, running in P2, an artist in creating model cars and something of a star racing driver in both slot car and this e-racing. He's also uh, done some amateur racing on real tracks too with some degree of success, but success and Mikael Nimas seem to go hand in hand. P1 he is now, but Thomas Voigt is chasing him down. So this is the Q3 series and it is Mikael Nimas and Thomas Voigt P1, P2, P3 is Jamie Green, and there is Jamie Green, but being pushed hard now by Bettina Schuller. So Bettina just lining up the uh, Jamie Green car as uh, Thomas Voigt continues to chase down Mikhail Nemas. The cars look absolutely outstanding and sound so good as well. Such a fast track, this uh, Monza circuit, of course. 5.793 kilometers. Sweeping, parabolica, start finish straight. Cross the timing line, Nimas leads from Foyts, P2, Green, P3, and Bettina Schuller is a P4. Jamie Green, is he about to lose out on this P3 place? Bettina Schuller going into the first chicane takes a look at uh, the Jamie Green car and then thinks better of it. So for the moment, Jamie Green's P3 is assured. However, you know that Bettina Schuller means business here. Mikhail Nemas has got something like a 1.3 second margin over Thomas Voigt at the moment in the TV team car. Jamie Green uh, in P3 is some um, uh, Seven and a half seconds down on Thomas Voigt, so work to do, but of course his rear view mirror is full of the Bettina Schuller car. So he is having to focus just as much on defending as he is attacking and trying to bring down that gap to our P2 driver. On board with Bettina Schuller now. You can see just how fast and appreciate the sheer speed of this uh, Monza circuit into the chicane, take as much curb as you can on the in and just be a little wary in the middle section of that chicane and then take plenty of curb on the way out as well. Sounds like I know what I'm talking about. You know damn well I don't. All I can do is talk about the great racing that we're seeing in the overtakes because Bettina Schuller made short work of Jamie Green as he takes a very long line around the Parabolica to try and slingshot with additional speed going into the first chicane. Will it work for him? Mikhail Nemas then taking plenty of curb. There's Thomas Voigt. Steadfast in that P2 position and then stand by because, oh! Bettina shortcuts the chicane, clatters into the side of Jamie Green. He wasn't therefore able to take advantage of that wayward moment from Bettina. And he's still in that P4 place. So Mikhail Nemas, 
something of a star when it comes to this Italian circuit at Monza. Jamie Green's not done with the final potential podium place, though, as he continues to pressure Bettina Schuller. So the onboard dash display then of Jamie Green's car. 170, 180, 190, 200 kilometers per hour. Just holds on to the back end of his uh, Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo car. And look at the speed now. Can we touch 300 kilometers per hour? Under the bridge, you bet we can, 327. But for all of that, Bettina Schuller appears to look pretty comfortable in that P3 place. In the meantime, we have to cross to Mikhail Nemas, exiting the Parabolica, heading towards the checkered flag. Thomas Voigt will take P2, but who will be P3? Is Bettina Schuller going to hold on to this? Or is Jamie Green going to pip her to the post? No, Bettina holds on. Makes the car pretty wide. So, confirmation there. Nemas, Voigt, Bettina Schuller. And here's Mikael Nemas then in the winner's circle. So three sim racers from the RCCO eSports series on the podium in this qualifying race, including myself. I have to say it was a bit weird, or weird this race for me because I couldn't see Jamie Green's car in the race. We had the situation before when one car was not showing up in the game. I saw it was showing up in the real stream, so it was just for me personally. Jamie, did you see me? I did see you actually. Um, I had the same situation earlier in the game where there was only three people that I could see in the, in the race. But um, yeah, all in all, it's good fun. And um, I think you pushed me off, didn't you? I didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Good excuse. Yeah. So you liked it, Jamie, the racing today? Yeah. It, I mean, with the current situation, it's actually just nice to meet up with everybody online and see everyone. Uh, you know, it's been a long time since we've had a DTM event. So, you know, this is a good substitute. And um, it's not easy, I can tell you that. I mean, um, we've seen guest drivers, drivers win both times so far. And... Um, I haven't progressed past the Q4 yet, so I've got some work to do. Thank you, Jamie. So take some practice laps in the next day because round three is coming up already next Tuesday. It's a very, very short break until the next round. And it's a short break before Q4. I think we are ready for the last race and the last tickets before the semi-final. This is the big one. Q4, a huge grid of cars. Robin Freins, pole position, Nico Muller alongside. Then we have Rene Rast. Then it's Vashau, Duval, Foyt, Skotka and Bettina Schuller making up the uh, huge grid of cars that have got six laps of this Monza circuit for this Q4 race. At this stage of the proceedings, the lights are about to go out. Robin Freins and Nico Muller with the drag race too. That first chicane, Robin Freins with a brilliant start. We're on board with Lloyd Duval then on the outside. Freins, little squeeze between uh, Robin and, and Nico Muller and Rennie Rast once again using the front bumper. Well, why not, sir? Nico Muller leading now from Robin Freins, P2. Rennie Rast is P3. And now into the second chicane then as Muller on the inside of Freins. Wow, position seesawing nicely here between Nico Muller and Robin Freins, potentially. Like Duval is uh, P3. And uh, we keep our focus and our attention on Robin Freins at the moment. And Renny Rast is still not out of this, running in P4 ahead of Vashau and Skotka. Then it's uh, Jamie Green and looked like Jamie Green was out on the gravel there. Now, whether he collected Thomas Foyt at the same time? Oh, I think not. Because uh, Thomas Foyt then in the uh, lovely liveried car, number seven continues to go. Uh, all sorts of strife for Vashau then in the Phoenix racing car. As Nico Muller leads from Robin Freins and like Duval means business as well. Trying to wrestle away that uh, position from Robin Freins. First time of asking in this uh, Q4 race, then they head around the Parabolica. Now, Lloyd Duval is getting something of a slingshot here. 
He'll get the draft off the back of the Robin Frein's car. He could be a real menace going into the chicane and ready to go down the outside of both of them. Will he switch to the inside now and dive to the inside of Robin Frein's? He does, but that becomes the outside. But that was a brilliant move by Loic Duval, who manages to hold on to the wayward back end of the car in that PE2 position, and he's going to chase down Nico Muller now. There's Bjorn Skotska, who's running in P5 ahead of Bettina Schuller, who is uh, P6. Rennie Rast is P last. Just thought I'd mention that. No, he's not. P9. Jamie Green is P10. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Uh, we're just having fun here. And, oh, as you can see, some of the barriers being scattered across the place as Loic Duval uh, moves up into P1. So it's a three-way fight for honours here with Duval, Frines and Muller. Frines on the inside of Duval. Are they going to go three abreast? This is never going to work. Well, I'll tell you what, for Nico Muller, it jolly well did. What a brilliant move from Nico Muller. Frines and Duval continue to swap paintwork aplenty. A great shot there from right alongside and just into the entry of the Parabolica. Here's Loic Duval then, touches Muller first, then uh, touches the car of uh, Robin Frines. And ahead of them all is Nico Muller, but not for long. Because Robin Frines has got the inside. That will become the outside, though. And like Duval, can he hold on to this? No. Nico Muller in front. Like Duval doing everything he can, bar throw the kitchen sink at the cars ahead of him. Oh, calm down, Dave. Uh, here is uh, car number four of uh, Bjorn Skotka. Uh, Scotty, who is running in P4, but he's being chased by René Rast, who in turn is being chased by uh, Vachau. And then it is Bettina Schuller. Uh, Thomas Voigt is uh, P8 at the moment. But in the meantime, now, as you can see, Nico Muller has dropped back, and now it is uh, Frines and Duval uh, virtually welded together. Don't think it's all over for Nico Muller yet, though. He will come good. We're only at about half distance of this Q race. There's been more overtaking in the uh, first three laps of this than I've seen for a long time. Absolutely brilliant racing from all you guys and girls, I should hasten to add. As Bettina's doing a good job in P7 as well. So here is Loic Duval under the bridge. There's Nico Muller. Don't count him out of this just yet. Frines, Duval, Muller. DTM P1, P2, P3. At the moment, uh, nothing uh, to be guaranteed yet as we start lap four of six. Here comes Duval, ready to pounce. Frines, though, got it all under control. I say that, his entry into the mid part of the chicane was not brilliant, but he still stays ahead. And of course, the more these two fight, as I said to you, it allows Nico Muller back into the game. This is Hashtag Race Home. We're on Q4 of event number two from Monza. And Nico Muller then squeezing like Duval. And Nico Muller with additional momentum is able to get past Loic Duval and make it up into P2. Said it weren't all over yet. So Duval, who equally will Fight back, of that you can be sure. Just touches into the gravel. Good save from Loic Duval. Lesser drivers like me would have had it turned around by now. Robin Frines is going to be defenceless here because Nico Muller has got so much speed. But just when you think someone is defenceless, they find a way of making the car twice as wide as it is. And Robin Frines did that with aplomb. There's Bjorn Skotka, who is under pressure now from Rene Rast who in turn has got Vachau behind him as well. Here is Rennie Rast all the way around the outside of Bjorn Skotka. So a change for the uh, P4 and P5 places. And now Frines, P1, Muller, P2, Duval, P3. 
but you wouldn't bet anything on that staying that way for the next hundred meters of tarmac. So Nico Muller then chasing down Robin Frines and building, building, building speed. It's a long way around the outside of the Curve Grande. But I tell you what, this will give him the inside for the chicane. This could be a superb move from Nico Muller, and he made it work. Lloyd Duval is trying to take advantage of the hole in the air that Nico Muller is creating as well. In the meantime, P's four, five, and six are being contested quite hotly. At the moment, it's Rennie Rast P4, Bjorn Scotcher P5, and Vashau is P6 in the Phoenix Racing Entered Vehicle. Vehicles in question, the Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo cars. Muller leads, but Freins is coming back. Or is he? They all look so predatory. But for the moment, uh, Nico Muller has got it all together. Here comes Robin Freins though. Creeping, creeping, creeping. And Wow, I thought he was going to just use a little bit of left-hand lock and go to the outside of Nico Muller. No, he's going to try and go through. It's okay, we're loving it. And here comes Lloyd Duval. Final lap. Hold on to your hats, everybody. Right, here we go. Currently, it's Muller, Freins, Duval. P1, 2 and 3. Will it stay that way? Not on your Nelly. Uh, no chance. Famous last words. Here is Lloyd Duval, who we travel on board with, and we cross now to Robin Freins. Frank Beeler's pulling his hair out. <laughs> Our race controller. We're trying to keep an eye on all the uh, shenanigans going on here. Over the curbs of the <laughs> second chicane, the uh, Variante della Rogia, and heading up towards the uh, right-hander, which is turn number six, which is Lesmo one. Then it's uh, Lesmo two, of course, after a quick blast of throttle from Robin Freins in his pursuit of Nico Muller. Now, Robin Freins, if I have learned anything about him, he's cool, calculating, and he knows when to strike. And, of course, on the last lap, that is the time to do it. So, Nico Muller's victory is far from assured here as they go through the Variante Ascari. Down behind the paddock now, here comes Robin Freins. Out dragging Nico Muller. This will give him... A great in to the uh, Ascari. Muller carries too much speed. Robin switches to the inside. He set that up perfectly. What did I say? Robin knows exactly when. And by perhaps a couple of centimeters, Robin Freins has taken it. P1 to Freins, P2 Nico Muller, P3 Duval. Uh, Skotka takes P4, then it's Vashau ahead of Rast, ahead of Bettina Schuller. Wow, that was an extraordinary race. Here comes Jamie Green taking P8. This is the beautiful livery of the uh, Thomas Voigt car. We'll take P9 ahead of Andreas Zurch, who will take P10. That was utterly brilliant, everyone. What a race. However, victorious, it is the uh, DTM star, Robin Freins. He is race winner of Q4. And uh, celebrates, and if you feel so disposed, Robin, could do with a slug of that champagne, friend. Well done. Wow, a lot of action in Q4, especially of our DTM drivers. Um, but Tom, isn't that, that what you exactly want to see in sim racing? For me, it was a surprisingly good. Uh, incredibly disciplined and you can see that uh, that even though they are trying to make the little advantage there's respect and uh, of course there's um, very very talented uh, drivers behind the steering wheels and in, in the in the simulating cars. Thank you Tom and the man with a mission in this championship at the moment is definitely Robin Freund second in the first round at Spa and fighting for victory again this week here in Monza. Let's have a look at him. Actually, the new DTM season should have started last weekend at Zolder, the home track of Robin Freins. Corona has put a spoke in the wheel for all of us. The new DTM cars remain in the garage. Instead, there is increasingly sim racing. 
In the case of Robin Freins, mainly electric, with the Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo and hashtag race home, and with the Audi e-tron FE06 in the virtual Formula E. In the real Formula E, Freins made a name for himself last year with victories in Paris and New York. And the Dutchman is well on the way to establishing himself in sim racing as well and collecting more trophies. And this, as the name, hashtag race home already says, from his home near Maastricht. Grew up here. I've been uh, born here, raised here. Um, my family comes from here, so uh, it's, it's, it's home. Coming back from racing or on the other side of the world, uh, it feels good to be here. Before the corona pandemic, almost every day visiting his house, the family of the Dutchman. I'm um, a family guy, so we always see the family uh, on Wednesday evening. Um, we always come, come together, my brother, uh, my sister, my grandma as well. So we always have dinner together, uh, which is always nice. For hashtag race home, Freins has only one goal. Well, obviously, you're always fighting to, to win every race you're competing in. At the season Through opener the in Spa, stop. the he DTM driver had to admit defeat, mistake. only to sim racing and professional Alexis, Alexis Chambon in a spectacular super Alexis final. Freins is one of the title favourites at hashtag race home right away despite the early morning start time not being perfect for him. Well, obviously, I don't mind to, to sleep. Uh, everybody needs his own sleep, and uh, uh, also for me, but um, yeah, I'm not a morning person, let's say it that way. So next up is the semi-final already, six cars, and only the top two proceeds to this super final. This is it. It's the semi-final. And we have, going from P1, the Scuderia driver, Pim Sterrenberg, alongside Mikael Nemas. Then it's Mike Rockefeller. Then it's Robin Freins. Then it's Nico Muller. And then it is Loic Duval. So, to find the two drivers that will go into our super final. Let's go racing! Mikael Nemas then immediately gets something of a better start and uh, puts himself into P1. Look at Mike Rockefeller, he means business already up to P3. And here comes Robin Freins battling his way through the traffic. You couldn't bet against any of these drivers, they are all superb. Mikael Nemas leads from Pim Sterrenberg, who's P2. Mike Rockefeller is P3. Then it's Nico Muller, Robin Freins and Loic Duval, the three drivers that gave us such entertainment in the Q4 race. On board shots with Robin Freins now as he battles with Nico Muller and uh, finds himself in that P4 position. Nico Muller now being relegated to P6 because Loic Duval comes through. Here's Mike Rockefeller then, P3, beginning to chase down Pim Sterrenberg. Who momentarily goes to the lead, gets past Mikael Nemas with a daredevil move up the inside, going into that chicane. Mikael Nemas picking up that penalty then. And Mike Rockefeller is just biding his time here, allowing these two to unsettle themselves so that he will be in a position to take advantage as Nemas runs very wide around the Parabolica. Indeed, Rocky is able to take advantage and potentially to Robin Freins, who's in that very menacing P4 position, dives to the inside now to go into chicane number one, as does Mike Rockefeller to pick up the lead of the race. Robin Freins could be in P2 come the end of this chicane. We're on lap two of three in this semi-final. Two drivers, of course, will go through to the super final. That one lap dash for cash, metaphorically. But of course, the honors up for grabs and the pride. And my Rockefeller has made a bit of a Horlicks of that. And that plays into the hands of Robin Freins, who stealth like was just waiting for any opportunity and Mike could lose out on P2 here. Indeed he does, because Pim Sterrenberg is through into P2. And here comes Mikhail Nemas now on the inside of Mike Rockefeller. So there is Mike Rockefeller to the left-hand side of your picture, and ho, 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 here comes Loic Duval. 
<laughs> with a small shove. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> and as if one was not enough, have another. Uh, take that, sir. Lloyd <laughs> Duval now finds himself in P4. And, well, Robin Fryens is just escaping up the road from uh, Pim Sterrenberg, who is uh, P2. So, Mike Rockefeller P3. Uh, Loic Duval and Mike Rockefeller absolutely side by side. This could be dangerous going into this chicane. Oh, what a shot that is of the timing line and of these uh, fantastic Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo cars are flying past. Robin! Robin goes wide! And that played into the hands of the Scuderia driver who puts himself in P1 on this, the last lap. But Robin Frines will not be done with this. Here's Robin on the inside now. Each of the drivers tries to outbreak each other. Well, Pim Sterrenberg is doing a brilliant job. I mean, up against the racing talent of Robin Frines, not for the first time, Pim has shown that he's made of uh, stern stuff here and will not take any prisoners. So, Pim leads from Robin, P2, but here comes Frines once again, lining up the car ahead of him. And Mike Rockefeller is lining up Loic Duval here. I'm sure um, that Loic Duval's uh, contact on Mike Rockefeller has not only been noted, I'm just hearing in my headphones here, he's got some bubble gum stuck on the brake pedal. That was the problem. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> right, here is Rocky. Here, though, is the Scuderia driver. Pim Sterrenberg is going to beat Robin Frines to take P1. P2, Robin Frines. P3, Mike Rockefeller. Nico Muller, P4. Uh, Loic Duval, P5. And Mikel Nimas, P6. A great drive from Pim Sterrenberg then. Well done, sir. A great drive and a great design. Wow, another cool race with a lot of action, but mainly behind the leader. And this means we see two Flying Dutchmen now in the super final. This one lap shootout, which was already very, very exciting last week at the virtual Spa track. The pole position belongs to our guest driver, Pim Sternberg, and it's up to him to describe the racetrack here at Monza. After 150 meter board, you press brake. Then you start to aim on the sausage curb. Then the left here, you try to touch it with the sausage curb as well, then go on the power here. Then you take the short line uh, here, get to this curb. Then it's flat out, the second you came. Then you, oh, then you press the brake there, the sausage curb there, all the sausages here, and you try to with the car as straight as possible. Then you brake at the 50 meter board. Try to get the car as much to the right side as you can. Then 50 meter board again. Again, aim for the curb. Try not let it go on the exit on the gravel. Then you brake here under the bridge. Try to go most to the right side of the track. And then inside and you're not trying to go too wide at this exit then the parabolica you break at the 150 meter board then turn in try to go as high as possible to the wide line and then it's off to the finish line This is it, the winner takes all dash for cash. One lap of this brilliant Monza circuit, contested between two brilliant drivers. Pim Sterrenberg, the design contest Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo car, and Robin Freins, who drives the Aral Ultimate Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo car from Abt Sportsline. And of course, Pim Sterrenberg, 
winning the Race Home Design Contest and the lights go green and let's go racing for the final time from Monza. Pim Sterenberg then tries to make his car as wide as possible to deny Robin Freins the opportunity going through the Variante da Retefio, the first chicane. Robin now creeps and creeps and creeps and gets ever closer to Pim Sterenberg around the Curva Grande, turn number three. Heading up towards the second chicane, the De La Rosia chicane. Robin just taking a look at the inside of the uh, Pim Sterenberg car, just trying to worry him, trying to harry him. All he needs is the tiniest of mistakes from the car that is P1 currently and Robin Freins would be through. On the inside, he takes quite a lot of curb. That nearly unsettles the car, but Robin holds onto it beautifully. The DTM and Formula E star now reels in the Pim Sterenberg car under the bridge. There is just the very anti-Ascari, the Ascari chicane to be done before one last straight ahead of the Parabolica. So Robin Freins now, which way will he go? Inside, outside? Well, he chooses the outside. Will he switch back to the inside though on the exit of the Parabolica? For the moment, Pim Sterenberg has got this sewn up, but Robin Freins is not done yet. Oh, very nearly a photo finish by uh, five one hundredths of a second. Second It's won by Pim Sterenberg. He takes the super final victory. Brilliant racing. The second race home we went is in the books and the victory went again to one of our guest drivers and we have a repeat of last week in Spa when the second place went to Robin Freins and Robin, it's almost time to take a victory, isn't it? Well, it's about time I win a race now, you know? <laughs> but well, it's good time, championship, so... So next but time we really... have the update prepared of the PlayStation? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's... It was a bit of a misunderstanding, but... Uh... I will uh, train a bit more so the first victory will come along hopefully. And Pim, how about you? How was your experience racing with Robin in the Super Final? Well, that really feels uh, good. I didn't really expect uh, to make it because Robin was really uh, on it in the last lap, but to make it by only less than a half tenth is good. So Tom, you are new to Race Home. It was your first Race Home experience today. What's your impression of this racing series? Pretty good. It has been very close racing and uh, along the way it became more and more disciplined as I already mentioned and the final was completely clean. Frank Bieler could have a few cigarettes, he could have his coffee. There was no interference for him in the final and uh, to see Robin Frins coming through with a day which started perfect according to the young Dutchman, he did incre incredibly well. We have seen uh, Loic Duval is not using a steering wheel. We have uh, we have seen how uh, Nico Müller, we have seen Rockenfeller, René Rast and Jamie Green all having a few difficulties uh, to make it into the first place uh, of, the, um, of the championship. But Robin Frenz, very well done. He missed half a car length to beat his uh, countryman Pim. Great racing. I truly enjoyed my very first show. Thank you very much, Tom. Hopefully we have you back with us next week, next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central European Summertime is already the next race home event. And let's see if Robin maybe can make the first victory then. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed today's racing. Bye.